I had too much stuff, far too much paper and books just spilling all over the floor. A messy space can feel so overwhelming, it can stop you having fun. When I started crafting seriously, I bought supplies for making cards. So of course I bought scrapbook paper, lots of it. I bought ink pads, I bought punches and I bought stamps. Basically, I bought lots and lots of stuff and it gradually just took over my space. I loved it all, I loved my paper, but I solved my space problem by taking over a room. And of course, because I then had lots of space, I just kept adding to my stash. And I knew that something had gone really wrong when I was stepping over books as I walked into my craft room. The amount of stuff just everywhere was getting in the way. When I wanted to film something, I had to do a big tidy. Even using up scraps for snippets, it just wasn't enough. So last week I dug deep and I had the most enormous sort out. We cleaned up my craft room, we decorated and we got some systems going. So today I thought I'd go behind this camera here and share a little bit of how I have done the organisation of those supplies. Things that have got just a little bit of tidiness about them so that I don't feel anywhere near as overwhelmed. Now my room isn't perfect and my systems are still evolving and I've definitely got a long way to go but I just thought by sharing some of my progress I would inspire you to get organised too. So this is my desk that you see me crafting at and it is absolutely my happy place. In fact this is a recent project that's going to be coming up soon, another pocket. Very happy designing those. These are the categories of item. I thought I would take a moment to talk you through today. So I'm going to have a chat about how I now organise things like books, book pages. I thought you might be interested in how I organise my digitals and no judgement here today hopefully. I'm just manning up and having a go at disclosing what I'm doing behind the camera and if you enjoy this then let me know as well because I can do a bit more behind the scenes if you're interested. So I thought I'd share how I organise my journals for example, so what do I do with the finished items and there will be a little bit of a disclosure on my finished ephemera, so all the pockets, the tags, the journal cards, all those things I make, what do I do with them, where, where do they go, so I'll have a little bit of a share on all of these and if there are any suggestions for how you organise your items. I'd be really really pleased to know how you organise, whether it's your desk, your craft room if you're lucky enough to have one, and even the items on your desk like the baskets that I use here today. So let's start with the books and what I do to create a system that allows me to find what I want when I want it and to put it back quite easily without taking up too much time. So this is the zone that I'm going to talk about to begin with. We're talking about books. In fact, I already have something in the way, which is always the issue, isn't it? Always having things that you have to move before you can get at the thing you want. So I now have, well, I always had a lot of books, but they are organized according to a style. And I'm finding that that's quite useful. So although they are in piles and they're on the floor, they are organised so to know roughly where to go to when I want something. I make a lot of junk journals with book pages. I predominantly use book pages when I make junk journals, which means that the pages in each of these do get ripped out for that purpose, not just for making ephemera. Now, I do have other books around my craft room. I'll show you a little bit in a minute, a few more. But let me explain the system that I've now got. And although they're in piles, so you do have to route to the bottom to get to any of the specific ones, it's not too deep a pile. So let me try and explain what we've got on each of these. And I've got my vlogging camera, which means I'm going to be moving around a bit to do my best to show you what we've got. So first of all, the left-hand pile, I'm going to call all of my technical dictionary pages. So you can see they're large and deep books. I really like these. I make 
little pockets out of them with about three compartments and they're typically large books. I like the font so I use the fact that it has beautiful font in some projects and some of these have got those thinner pages so I know what I'm getting when I go to this pile and they're not mixed up with all sorts of other types. Now on top I have a dictionary that I've already dismembered and that makes it quick and easy to get at the pages because sometimes I don't want to be doing the deconstruction of a book when I'm mid-project. So that is the left-hand pile. Now they were all mixed up and on the floor and everywhere before I had my declutter and sort. Next to it I've got a completely different pile. Oh I love this pile. Now you might recognise one or two of these from recent projects so let's have a look. This Alan Titchmarsh book I think I did some pockets with recently. So this pile, they're easier to find in charity shops here in the UK. Some of them are gifted from friends, so things that they didn't want anymore. So these are my more modern books, typically glossy pages. I think one of them might be in the wrong place, but they are those larger ones where if you want to reach for something to make something with a big book page, hence the Alan Titchmarsh book, or a glossy book page, you know what you're getting. And I've tried to actually line up the side of the book so I can see what's in it. I've managed to do it on most of them, I think. And again, it's quite a large pile and it tells me I don't need to buy any more. So I can now see what I'm getting in this pile. I do not need to buy any more animal wildlife books. I have got a beautiful the Concise British Flora in Colour, just nestled underneath Victorian Farm. Um, that's a gorgeous book, but I don't need to buy any more of those either. I don't need more dictionaries and I don't need more of my big book pages. Right, I'll move to the next pile. So you can see they're quite different. This one is just more modern. I think Shakespeare's jumped in in the wrong place. More modern and smaller. So I do use them for making pockets. I've even dejunked and added to this pile some of my old technical books from university. So this is a smaller pile. They're really useful. They are great for if you want to make a masterboard. So this sort of cheap matte book page glues together really really well. As I say Mr Shakespeare should be in the next pile. I'll explain that one. But these are really readily available in our charity shops, but the basic book page is brilliant for masterboards and gluing and sticking. Occasionally I might use one or two in a junk journal, but there's probably less interest in those pages for junk journal pages. Right, we get to the very interesting boxes. And let me talk about, let's talk about this box here. So this box is full of absolute beauties and <laughs> if I'm honest they're ones that I struggle to dismember and you can see why. Some of them have got these gorgeous plate pictures in. I'm not going to rip that up. What would I do with it? Just gorgeous. And they're older books. Now I bought batches of books online in batches of about 20 or so. Swiss Family Robinson. Just lovely. And you can see the the pages are just a bit more aged. So I would use these very carefully. I might stamp on them and paint the stamp. They're differing thicknesses and you get some very interesting font in each of them. So I really really like these and I keep them together. They're, they're basically a batch that I bought and I've added two when I found other gorgeous books in various bookshops. Look, I love them. I love them. So I need to do things very carefully with those if I'm going to dismember them. What, what do you do with books like these? Do you have the courage to tear them up? And what do you make with them? Let me know in a comment down below. Right, the last column here on the right Oh, just going to move. Oh, that is so heavy. Let's move that. 
And this is a pile of books that I absolutely adore. So I've got, I've got actually a mock old book in there. That's a dictionary. Sorry, that is a Shakespeare book of plays at the bottom. They're not organised with their spine showing, so it's not so easy to tell what they are. But down at the bottom I've got a gorgeous vintage encyclopaedia that I've done lots and lots with over the years. You can see the more yellowing, darker colour to these books. These are basically very similar to the box that I've just shown you, but they are definitely ones that I use a lot. So you might, you might know from recent videos, for example, the complete works of William Shakespeare has been used in some recent projects. So these are older style book pages. So basically, in summary, I've got the old stuff, I've got modern, I've got large and possibly glossy, and then I've got my technical uh, dictionaries over here and another batch then of my old. And if you know me well, you might think, where on earth is Henry Terry, a Victorian flower album? Well, this is not all the books I have. Let me just show you a little bit of a few others, a snapshot, so you can get the feeling of how many I have. So I'm now standing on a, a little raised footstool and giving you a scan of what's on the top of one of my areas of box cubes. So I have a wall of box cubes and you might get to see what's in those one day if I'm brave enough. But here we are, here is, here's Henry Terry and I know I've bought several of those. These are the book pages. I don't know if I can get it out actually. So these are those gorgeous book pages that are just stunning and are fantastic for making junk journal covers. So I like to do that. I don't know if you can see any of that as I'm just flicking through. I think you get the gist, the gist of it. But we also have on here uh, Tunnycliffe sketches of bird life and I've taken pages from that and made folios so they're really big pages with beautiful images. Now this is the layer of books that I don't typically reach for very often so they're not integrated into the piles down below and I don't want those piles to be so big that it's really difficult to get anything at the bottom of the pile so I'm happy for some of these lesser accessed ones to sit higher up. You can see a nice pile of vintage gorgeousness just over there. So those are my rather tatty collection of Dickens books from the 1800s. They are falling to bits, so I feel it's okay to use them. But basically this is another selection of books which I don't use as much. I think I did um, a trifold with that one recently. I don't use them as much, I've got space, I've got to use all the space that I've got, so I'm okay with these being up here, but I do need to do a bit more of an organisation and maybe sw swatch, switch a few around. You can see I've got some lovely big stationary pal boxes sitting up there as well, and some curiously shaped pages in that one, so I need to find something to do, and those are enormous glossy book pages. I think I made some three pocket envelopes with those. So I like to just grab something and get creative and play with something different every now and again. So enough about books, but what about book pages themselves? What do we do with the pages once we've pulled some pages out of a book and we need to have a place to put them? So it's so easy for book pages to just get everywhere. And it can take ages to organise them, to put them into some sort of system. So I've now got a relatively upright box and those spare pages go in there. Let me just share a little bit about the nature of the pages that I put in that helps me be organised. So this is the box where I now store whole book pages and it is, it's a strong and relatively upright box. You can see Yankee Candle. And I I have it handy, so I have it on that shelf above me, so this one up here. I'll tell you a little bit more about those digital shortly and how they are really helping me feel more organised, those little tubs. So this box, let's take some out. This box has some of those pages from an art book that I use to decorate the front of a junk journal cover. It basically has all those pages that when I'm ripping up a book to make something like an envelope, I might see a page and I think, I don't want to 
cover that up I want to make use of the picture I mean look at this one and when I'm making junk journals I use lots of lovely book pages and these are the special pages that get put aside so I've got in here let's pull another one out which I just saw I've also got some book pages that I've had a go at dyeing and I actually had a play with acrylic paint in a little tub and diluted it and just did it like that. I don't drink tea so I don't have any tea bags. I just thought I want something a bit different from using coffee. So those are in there. And then I've got these what else have I got? I've got lovely large book pages. Here's another example. Ones that you just don't want to rip up in the moment. So I've got some lovely animals on this and I liked the colour at the top of the page. So we've got some really nice images, so I thought I'd keep those. There's a few more, so I've got some botanicals. So they are whole book pages, typically, and that sort of overspill, you need something, a box, to put them in so that they don't just become things that fill your desk. It's so easy for stuff like this to become the the thing which makes you feel overwhelmed. I've mentioned junk journals several times so why don't we move on to that category and I've pulled out a box which I keep some of them in. Sometimes I've been keeping them up here so I just have maybe one or two of my current ones sitting up here and because they are kind of gator mouth items they can balance relatively easily but if you get a few they fall and the place looks really messy and they make other little containers slip along the shelf. So at the moment I'm trying to just have a box of them and well in fact I have a few boxes but this is what they look like. So I keep them in a box. Many of you have asked what I do with them and I pretty much don't sell these. They're all completely individual and unique. I, well I've got a, another uh, project collaboration coming up, Junk Journal July, so if you like seeing pages be filled in journals like this then do stick around for that. I, I look at them, I do write in some of them, but at the moment if they're not on a shelf I am putting them in this box and keeping them tidy and protecting them. What do you do with your journals if you're not someone who sells them? They're kind of a bit of history, aren't they? They show how we have evolved. They're also really easy to just have hanging around and filling your room and adding to that sense of being overwhelmed. So I think it's good to box them up. As I say, I've got a couple of boxes. These are just a bit of a random selection. You might recognise one or two. They date back a few years now. There's that... Henry Terry Victorian Flower Album that features in some. I absolutely love that. So that's my box of junk journals and we can move on to another category. Shall we talk about... Oh, let's talk about real vintage papers. You haven't seen any papers yet. Let me show you what's under my desk. So I'm now underneath my desk and fortunately it is quite a big desk and I've got a number of these big tubs so just showing you my hand so you can see the scale of these and I'll show you what's in them in a second and indeed what I've used to split up the papers and organise those so you can see another box there that's got some vintage music paper in another sort of overspill box and my collage tub here which I'll talk you through as well and I'll explain how I how I manage when I get build up from here now and distribute it back into some of these wallets. So why don't we start with this big plastic tub. In here I have split up different types of paper and card. So it's big enough to house 12 by 12 this way. So I have a pouch for smallish pieces of paper that are patterned. So the qualifying criteria for that one is it's got to be patterned and it's not cardstock. What have we got behind it? Again, as I say, this is an evolving system. I think this one is a bit of overspill that needs sorting out, so more paper. Then I've got 
this one here is plain paper and you can see there's lots of colour because that's what I like. I love playing with colour, love playing with paper just generally. I've got, oh this is a real chubby one, it tends to get to the stage where it's so full it starts to destroy the wallet. So this is card stock, anything that's been reduced from its full size it goes in there and because all of this is under my desk it is quite easy to just reach underneath and, and push pieces in. So whatever the state of it, if it's cardstock, it goes in. So you can see there's plain and patterned. So I'm not splitting up between plain and patterned when it comes to card. I don't have as much cardstock as I do paper. I have a category that I don't use much. I used to when I was making cards. So I have a wallet with glittery and mirror type papers I might use a bit of that I've got it so I should use it but I don't buy that stuff anymore then I get to the larger wallets so let me see if I can pull these out so then what I've got is the 12 by 12 pieces so things that have not yet been cut down but are ones that I might have a go at using soon and actually sitting behind me that I haven't shown you are those box cubes with 12 by 12 pads in that I occasionally use. I don't buy them very much now, do you? Do you buy scrapbook paper? This is definitely overspilled from my card making days. Let's turn it round to see if that helps. Oh, it's quite heavy. Wow. So card stock here, it's lovely patterns. Not so much what we use in our junk journaling these days. So if you've got ideas for what I should do with this as well, do let me know. And then right at the back, the category that's left, turn this round again, is 12 by 12 paper, that's not yet been reduced to smaller sizes, but is you know, near, near to me, so I can pull on it. Now it might be slightly less than 12 by 12, but it's those larger sheets. I've got quite a lot of Kanko. I absolutely love spots. I love the contrast of a black and that's got script on it. That's Kanko as well. And what I do every now and again is I go around my craft room and where I've got pads of things I rip pages out that I know I want to use and I put them in here so that they're near to hand accessible and I'm much more likely to use them that way. And then when I do use things and particularly for collage the pieces get smaller and they get put into a, a wicker basket that's on my desk. I'll just show you that. So this basket gets a lot more airtime on camera. This is the one where if I'm ripping bits up, particularly neutrals if I can, they go in here. And just while we're on my desk, oh, lovely pages, love it. I've added a couple more baskets and this is, again is my attempt to be a bit more organised and not so overwhelmed. These are going to be areas where I keep stuff that's being used at the very moment on a project. So I've got some envelopes here, handmade envelopes. I've got my little pouch here with my string and needle. And on, in this one, this black one, I'm actually having a play with some new papers. So I'm keeping my papers all together and stopping them floating all over my desk. So that's some of my paper management system. Let me just explain the collage tub behind. So the collage tub or the little basket I should say that sits under my desk to the left of my seat is this one and this has a whole mixture of papers in it and I'm absolutely comfortable with it being mixed up. So to stay organised and not feel so overwhelmed I need to get stuff off my desk quickly which means I can't always be incredibly organised about where it goes. Also I have a flow of papers that go from these more organised longer term wallets back into this collage basket and that means that I can sort of intentionally push papers that I want to be using and having a play with into here and when I make things like my pre-made journal pages I will pull out of here. I even allow some of those book pages to slip into here. I've got some digitals I might want to cut up. This is my very very current slightly larger pieces so larger than the pieces that go into that white basket and I might use them to collage on a junk mail envelope 
I might use them to make envelopes, I might use them to collage on a masterboard, just all sorts of, of loveliness. So I've got I've got a few digitals slipping in here. I have a system for digitals that I'll talk through in a second. But this is my rip up freely with a with no worries about being efficient, no worries about being frugal. These are the ones I want to use. These are the colours I'm currently happy with. These are some of the papers I want to try to use because I like to try to use things up. They're papers that I've put paint on because I just enjoyed doing that and just all sorts of, of anything. But it's to hand and it's specifically meant to be when I want to do ripping up and collage. Whereas if I want to do stamping and painting or just generally use gorgeous vintage music paper that sits in this box. Isn't that absolutely stunning? Absolutely love that. It's a bit more in here and then in this box. This is still needing a bit more sorting out. I've got some overspill of book pages to organise and a bit more of my music paper. Also just under my desk, if you want full disclosure, I have two bins. I have a bin for anything that's paper and I recycle absolutely every bit of paper that I'm not going to use and then I have a bin of things where I can't put it in paper recycling so I do do my best to keep that chain going in the right direction. So this is my paper selection. I do have others, maybe that's for another day, I think we've seen enough. Let's move on to another category. So let's talk about digitals and I have to say this is a category that I I didn't even know existed a few years ago oh just love them I do love them so my my love of paper does come partly from wanting to use up really basic supplies wanting to play with the things that go through our lives as a matter of course and making something better from them but I love I love the beauty of some of these so how could you not love a page like that how could you not love you know a pattern like that and I like thinking what can I do with them but whenever I use them obviously you get bits everywhere don't you and the key to using digitals well in a project and by that I mean getting out of your time what do you want I have found to be having a system that means you can access what you want, you know where it is and you can get it easily and perhaps you don't have to cut it out right from the beginning. So I've gradually evolved into a system of these little pots and I've got, I got in this one, so I've got, I think this one is sundry uh, sort of vintage style that's one pot. I don't necessarily keep them all by who created them, the digital creator. I, I organise them by style and type uh, and what they actually are. So this this one actually is Artie Mays because I just know which hers are. They're quite distinct. So in here I've got a number of those lovely little images of ladies. Can you see faces? I've got some words and text, I've got some bigger pictures, so I've I've added stamps and mica powder on the front of these to make them look just a little bit different on my faux vintage postcards. Um, so I reach into that on occasion, more than one occasion. A tub that I use a lot and I, I thoroughly recommend having one of these to stay a little bit more organised, let's bring it down here, is something to do with botanicals so anything that's got a botanical on it so anything that is about something growing so you can see some victoria designs and i don't even have to have got to the stage where it's totally cut out i will put in here it needs to be a certain size so not too big let's pull that out i'm gonna make such a mess in this process Oh, I've got some butterflies have snuck in there. There we go. So there's an example. Absolutely gorgeous image. And I've met, gone to the effort of cutting it out. Now, if that was just anywhere, I wouldn't be able to find it. And then I wouldn't be able to grab it and make, use it for the very specific purpose I want. That is a flower I've stamped and painted with metallic paint on some of that vintage music paper. So I've got there's probably some Tracy Fox in here. I've also got 
So some pages from books, they don't have to be digitals actually. But the idea is that in this little tub, I have a whole load of my botanicals and I know where they are when I want to reach them. You might say scissors are not botanical, but there's something botanical there. And just back to what's in, let's scan back up, what's in these little tubs. So I'll do my best to show you. I've got birds of any form. So some of them are cut out. They take longer to cut out. So it's really important that once we've gone to the effort of cutting things out, we put them in a space all together so we can make use of them. I've got lovely insects. They are probably Artie Mays, those. I just love those. Ooh, all sorts of, yep, little books. I did a glue book page using some of those books and I had a lot of fun doing that. So you want them to be readily available. And then we've got, I think up here, we've got tons of butterflies, which we all use, don't we? Do you use butterflies? And again, they take a while to cut out. I've got faces and I've got some arty pictures down below from a book page that I took the time to cut out. And you see the system. So we have, I've got some faux stamps there. I've actually got some, I think they're little brads. I've got some tags. I've got dictionary definitions from a children's book and I've got, say, some teal pages there. So the system that's working for me is divide up my digitals. Let's show you the system that isn't working for me yet, which is the plethora of pages that I've printed. Please don't judge. So my system at the moment for hard copy, oh, I've even got, I've even got some of my vellum that I've printed. The system at the moment has been just keep them all together. So I do try to not have such a stupid number. Look, you've got everything in here. They're not organised. They need to be. Christmas stuff. Beautiful. I did have them organised a bit by category. So I did have, for example, all of my butterflies together. At one stage I went by creator. I went by Tracy Fox in one section. Artie Mays in another, but it's got messed up, so I need to do some work on this. How do you organise your hard copy digitals that you've already printed? How do you do it in a way where you're not spending so much time organising rather than actually crafting? I don't know the answer to this one yet. I said this was going to be a very real, honest explanation of how I am trying to progress my work in progress and get on top of things. I'd love to know what you do to stay on top of your hard copy. My soft copy is very well organised, so my directory structure is all super organised by creator and I, I just memorise, I know what's in there and I just use my brain to remember. Whether that will last forever I don't know. But this is my hard copy unorganised, disorganised batch but I will at least gather them all together in one or two big plastic wallets and keep them at least stopping from overflowing. A category that we're probably all challenged with is scraps. And I did do a video recently about how I use these to create, particularly with neutrals, um, a lovely snippet. So I will just link that in the video description box below. But basically my solution is now and will continue to be putting them into different boxes. So I'll maybe not go through all of the explanation about the system I use for organising my scraps. Check out that video if you're interested. But the solution I do have is to have these handy. So all of those boxes that you get through your front door, maybe from Mr Amazon, I use for the allocation of different size of scrap. Make sure they're handy. I don't mind them being on the floor because then I'll just drop things into it and it stops all of these little pieces just going everywhere which they so easily can do. So let's talk about finished items of ephemera and projects that you have completed and the items that you create and if you're a busy crafter I suspect you've got some areas like this too and if you don't then I would love you to tell me how you manage and organise the items that you complete. Now I am lucky, I have a big craft room. Like I said, I went from a desk to a room and I'm really, really lucky, I do appreciate that. And this is the result of having done some of that sort out recently where I've plonked stuff 
on a spare desk in my craft room. But the system that I've been using, which, okay, it's kind of reached its limit, let's be honest, is to have a box for each item. So here we've got various snippets that I've made over the years, some more recent. There's the ones that are made with the little scraps, actually. So that's the more recent project. And they go in a box, and sometimes they're starting to go in a box, in a box. And I'm being honest here, so please, you know, just be nice, just be nice. I do my best. Underneath, you can see I've got more boxes. Well, this is an old ice cream tub, so we have in here, for example, journal cards that I've made, because I make a lot. And once I get going, I like to make lots of something. And I even have those that are sort of work in progress and if I have a spare moment I will grab one of these boxes and then I'll make more of them because I know I've got some examples there to use I've got some things to show me how to make them and if I get really stuck I can always watch one of my own videos which I do sometimes do so the project behind for example let's pull one out here we've got the envelope folio that I made with some junk mail so junk mail envelopes and I made a few of those and I really struggle to get things on Etsy as you know and I do apologise which means I always have some spares of these which is probably good if I wanted to show you how to do them again or we wanted to have another go or adapt it I really enjoyed this one just such gorgeous papers and yeah maybe we should make another of those soon but you can see I've got boxes and boxes of things and there's more than I'm actually showing you because I'm feeling rather vulnerable at the moment. Um, so let's see what we've got. So we've got some little, I think these are the, yeah, these are, I need to actually do the video on this. These are faux envelopes. These are recovery of something that I did wrong where I turned it into something with a, a pocket on the back. So not every project goes right, but you can see I've got lots of those, lots of them. Now the good thing about this is I then have supplies for when things like Junk Journal January and Junk Journal July come up, which means I've got something to reach for. And I do recommend you get stuff made up in advance, but maybe not quite so much as this. This one is a large box because I was making some Oh, look at that. I was making some uh, junk journal covers using a beautiful Artie Maze pattern. Sorry about the noise in the background. And this has got beautiful papers. It's got that zigzag sewing. And I added some beautiful butterflies on the front. And I made a batch of those with... It's Artie Maze's William Morris papers, if you're interested in her Etsy shop. So this, this is... They're actually all ready to go onto Etsy. I just need to put them on. But I've got all of the stuff ready to make more, which means it's easy for me to sort of go back and have another go. I forget how to make things. I don't know about you. I don't always have at the front of my mind how to make something. So it's, it's helpful for me to have some of the part maids ready kept. Now, when these boxes overflow, which they clearly are doing, I have been a bit more organised, particularly with my pockets, and put them into some wallets. So... Let me show you those. So the wallet system that I have to say is working for me is to use, let's pull one out, to use these large plastic wallets, which we can find here in the UK in relatively cheap pound shops. They used to be a pound, they're probably a bit more now. And I, I found them to be an absolute boon. So I've been putting my finished items in so made some of these these are pockets with decoration behind the window here so these are made from I think these are the ones are made from torn but torn uh, junk mail envelopes so there's a video on these as well but basically these plastic wallets you can see through them so you can see let's pick another so you can see what's in them and I keep the supplies that I need to make something as well as various finished items. So it looks like this one, for example, these will get used in Junk Journal July. Absolutely. I think these are my, what a mess I'm making now. 
these are my oh sorry about this these are my porthole pockets i've got the samples are made including the ones that go wrong because it's good to remember what you got wrong and it doesn't really matter anyway some of them don't have a hole and i've got i think i've got plenty of examples so just you know lots of inspiration when you feel like a bit more inspiration you can reach in and see some of the stuff you already made so these plastic wallets that can then sit relatively upright in another cardboard box and actually one more thing i've got in here so i felt i could use another of my old amazon cardboard envelopes i've been using that in there to house do you remember these these are my pre-made journal pages so again really helpful to have them made in advance i've got some spare book pages so that i don't have to go and look for a book that works so lots of those again organized quite well rather than just trying to position them on a shelf and it means i'm far more likely first of all to use them but i'm far more likely to make more and enjoy the time making because I'm not searching for stuff and I can grab these and put them in my journal and make up pages so much faster. So I'm looking forward to using those very soon. You can see I've made quite a lot. So that's a little chat about ephemera. Let me quickly show you just some of the other final categories such as, so we've got, let's have a chat about washi tape, glue, pens, paint that sort of thing the the necessary extras but maybe not so much paper based right washi tape a relatively new addition to my craft room and to be frank one that has proliferated and i don't know if you use it or even have started using washi tape do let me know if you're a long-term user or a, a recent admirer that started i have found that i need to limit myself to the use of a few and there's a couple of reasons for that. Aren't they gorgeous? So, first of all, I find it a bit overwhelming to have too big a choice of things. So to have fewer in just one tub like this is my way of allowing me to focus on the project that I have in hand. So what I've done is, well, I've very kindly been sent a few, quite a few of these from either Stationery Pal or the Washi Tape Shop. So these larger ones, and typically ones with foil, are the washi tape shop. And I think this is stationery pal, so sort of faux stamps. I keep a selection in this box. I keep my narrow black and white ones because they're incredibly useful for collage and for working on the edges of a piece of paper when you're collaging. I like to have one with script. So I keep a selection of these. I definitely have one or two with foil foil ones are the washi tape shop i will put as many discount codes as i possibly can in the video description box below so you can visit stationery pal or the washi tape shop to take a look at any of these and i'll also if i have one i will add my arteza discount code too when i show you paints you might be interested in that so i'll i'll have a box because behind the scenes i have a lot and so this is an example of a box of them so it's not well organized i need to do a better job but they are beautiful and what i'll do is go to a box every now and again and pull one out and just add it to my current box so introduce it a bit like i do with paper i've got some amazing amazing ones to play with i can't wait to use these in july on my journal pages i like to have a variety so when they've kindly sent me some, I have chosen sometimes these grid ones, so sort of graphy ones. It's just, they come in a roll sometimes, like this. I even thought about using the paper that they're wrapped in. I don't know if I can open them. When you, when you tear the paper off, you end up with, let's show you a few down here, gorgeous patterned, gorgeous patterned ones, aren't they? Absolutely stunning. I like this one with the coffee colours. But like I say, I can't have too many. I used to think I could have them all there and make the best choice possible for the design I wanted to make. But I realised I just need a mix of a few 
and it's actually quite a small box I have. My absolute necessary at the moment are my black and whites. I think these are stationary pal, and they're quite they're quite um, well priced stationary pal if you take a look. And then the other thing I'm trialling recently to be more organised is to just have a few on a little roll here, and you literally just put them on, pull them off. There's a serrated edge down there, so that's got quite big teeth. So washi tape is a really important category to me, as are brushes, paint, glue, you know, all of those basics. So I'll very quickly show you how I've been managing those. One of the most important areas in my craft room is this desk that I have sitting right beside me so that when I am filming and I have items on my desk, I can reach for my process steps, which I share each week, and they're in Pinterest. So at the point of filming this, I think I probably have about 21, 22 of those in Pinterest at the moment, all for you to download if you want to. I have my glues handy, so my process steps go here, and I try to do the same thing each week, then I know where to reach. And that's part of being organised, I think. Your brain starts to just know where things are, and you're not spending energy thinking about that before you actually do your crafting. I've got a tub here of my most used tools. You can see just basics like scissors and rulers in there and my corner rounder. I have a very untidy and need sorting out collection of brushes here. So really, really important for me because as you'll see, I have quite a lot of paint. My lovely brads down here, gold brads, paper clips and closures. So they get used a lot. Just moving down, I've got my tub of most used gel pens, really enjoy using those. My sewing machine, very handy, that's important to me and it's easy for me to get my hand on and just lift and get at, so it's a very lightweight one and I can get it out of the way when I'm not crafting. I've got some, move these, I've got some new tools to play with, so my grabby brushes I think I mentioned them in a video last week so that's new and I want them to be out and visible so I do make use of them I'm going to play with some new um, what do we call these spatulas palette knives with some paper so I can get some gesso and just add some texture some more brushes here I keep my various boxes of paint so I've got very quickly quite a few acrylics my very well used gold paint and my lovely Arteza palette, 36 pound. That's probably my all time favorite, most used over the years. So it is messy, but I thought we'd just be completely transparent today. I do try. Towards the right, I've got my various large tubes of stunningly gorgeous acrylic paint so we'll be doing some more play with those soon and I've made the effort as you can see to keep putting them back they are used into the boxes they came in because one of the ways which I'd find it really difficult to find anything is if I let these just get absolutely everywhere and be all mixed up it'd be easy just to let them go and maybe say everything should just go in one box but you'd never find the colour you wanted, would you? Whereas what I do is I, I kind of know which of these are in which box and you can see on the top, it's quite handy, you can see the colours and the name and they're in groups. So I sort of know where to go to and then within a box I'll find the one I want. And I've also made the effort to have a system of putting stuff back in the, the little boxes when, for example, I've played with my gouache paints which are here when I played with my, my larger watercolour paints. I need to do some more with these. So it would have been really easy for me to just let this become mayhem. I just wanted to share that not being overwhelmed sometimes means just a bit of sorting and tidying to keep on top of things like paints. The shelf above my desk, there are two, has a bit more space for pens. So I've got some watercolour pencils and some lovely Arteza fine nib pens there and I've got various chalk pens up here and some extra palettes and as we run along here you can see 
my small trimmers. So it's a space for organising some other items that are not too heavy. You can see the other half of my craft room, just the red that used to be on the walls. So this is my way of organising on an ongoing basis some of the supplies in my craft room. I hope that you've enjoyed seeing my work in progress and that you maybe drop me a comment and say how you are going about getting inspiration and organising yours. And as ever, come back next week where we'll be making things, making ephemera, adding to our boxes in this craft room. I hope to see you soon.